kind of look like geniuses actually, but we definitely are not geniuses. We went dancing. So the idea was to have a 35th anniversary party out in Colorado on the uh, trails that we built recently. And since we were bringing out some of the dudes, do some day trips, hit some parks in southwestern Colorado and northern New Mexico. And the guys we brought out, uh, Clint, Hoder, Cole Volker, Arie, Def Paul. So once we had all the guys together, we checked the weather and it was going to be terrible around Pagosa. It was terrible everywhere within a two hour drive, but there was a tiny little piece of the map that didn't have rain on it. And that happened to be Santa Fe, New Mexico. So we got up early. Polar's like, we're out. We got to go. 9.15, load up in the Winnie. Get in the Winnie. We load up the bikes in the, in the truck. Hit the road, drove about three hours or so, and it was 80 degrees and sunny. The first skate park we went to in Santa Fe was pretty old, funky, beat up. It was sketchy, graffiti, slippery. Bumpy, ghetto-y, tweakery. Park was pretty grimy. There were some wild locals hanging around there. It looked like the first skate park ever built kind of thing. Just fun to watch everybody just like attack that park. The hoder just, yeah, he just starts pedaling full speed around the park. He has no idea where he's going. He starts hitting stuff, just figuring out lines as he goes hanging on by a thread, uh, killing him. It's really entertaining. He was just cutting laps, getting the boys hyped. Oh. Yeah! With the snake bite? Jeez. He's just so big and has such a presence. He just like is a hype man. Juicy. You can't really not get stoked and like want to ride. I love it, dude. Yeah, first time meeting the youngsters, REA and Cole. Super sweet, son of the Lord. He's a beast. REA, he's super dialed. Drove out here, 24 hour drive straight, and then straight to like tail whipping a big gap. He's super sweet. It was awesome to get Def Paul on this trip. He decided to come last minute. I'd say it was 100% worth it. He was killing everything he touched today. Crazy toothpicks, 540 disaster, all sorts of maneuvers on the spine, all around. Good dude, good riding all day. Oh man, I was trying this little 180, pancake the ground pretty hard. <laughs> I'm not sure I've ever seen Clint fall. Not par for the course for Reynolds at all, but he, he was laughing as he was going down, but he did get scraped up. It did not sound very good or look like it felt good at all.
So Cole's flying around the park, finding all kinds of smooth lines, throwing tech tricks into, uh, and then at some point, you could tell he's kind of eyeing up a, a big fence, and he decided he was gonna air out of the fence into some big hillside. Yeah, Cole just boosted out of the fucking bowl and jumped right over the fence, like three feet over the fence. Cole ejects, lands on the ground, the bike bounces up, and I think the, the axle hit him in the nose. Like slammed his nose and blood was pouring out. You know, he's bleeding. We're trying to, you know, figure out how bad the injury is. At that point, we called it and moved to the other side of town to the next park. The son of the Lord, and he's riding around with like tampons jammed in his nose. So <laughs> he was like unstoppable. It was a much newer park, really smooth transitions. Not as kinked and weird and funky as the first place, but super fun. Once we started riding, it really started flowing and like, it was a small park that flowed real well. Hoder doing full laps around the park, monster trucking over parking blocks, dodging skateboarders. Way down at me. Cole's blasting the shit out of the hips, but then mind melting tech maneuvers. I, I, it just all turns into a big blur for me, but it's a pretty badass blur. You gotta be kidding me, this guy can ride too, just like his pops. It's sick to see, you know, all around rider. I'm gonna get you, but I know now. I'll just cry. Some old guy did a wheelie. <laughs> Moeller was like rolling around the deck and he wanted to do this manual. And we're like, you got that manual, dude. He tried a little bit and then like everybody's giving him pointers. He, he was like, we're staying until we pull this manual. I mean, I don't care how many tries. Yeah, he's like, all right, it's going down right now. And then he, he stomps it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was pretty sweet. You could see he was like genuinely stoked. Probably did take 50 tries, but you know, if he pulled it, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, so. Shit felt good. <laughs> Def Ball, he's he's a good friend of mine. He kind of got on s when I got on, and he was like, I'm getting on the trip, I'm coming out. And I was like, oh shit, all right. So he turned it up. He's like, I'm not coming out there to play around, I'm coming out there to get some clips, so. You don't really see Paul ride very often, and he was just destroying it. He's cutting some high-speed laps until he smashes into REA and breaks his phone. So that happened. I don't know why you guys aren't just on these fucking flip phones that really just work forever. You know what I'm saying? And in addition to smashing his phone, Paul breaks about 10 spokes. So we uh, took a little detour over to Rob and Charlie's bike shop in Santa Fe, New Mexico. Shout out to Rob and Charlie's and got some new spokes. We get the hot tip to head over to the uh, mountain bike jumps. Bike park. The jumps look like they hadn't been ridden in 10 years, probably. We look down at our tires and there's like a hundred goat heads in all of our tires. Tires, you can just hear them. 
Clint, Cole, and Mad Dog, they decided to just try to ride the trails through the goat heads. Uh, a couple of us stayed and rode this crazy wall ride while our tires were like deflating. It was pretty fun. So by the time the sun went down in Santa Fe, we were back on the road north to Pagosa Springs. We were deflated, but not defeated. 15 flat tires with like 100 thorns in each one of them. The dudes are picking them out now. They've been picking them out for hours now. So <laughs> we'll see. You. Needless to say, we're going to need a lot of tubes and a lot of tires. Second day of the trip. We rode the Pagosa Springs Park. We had kind of a rainy day, but it dried out and had a pretty fun session. There was a wild bull with some pretty gnarly coping in it. Definitely a little bit slippery. Caught a couple people off guard, but didn't seem to stop anyone. These guys were ripping it, but uh, it's, it's not easy, that's for sure. We're good, we're getting it. Yeah, REA shredded the bowl with style, with tricks. The street course didn't really make sense. At one point, Hoder jumped out of the street course over a giant metal fence into a mud hole on the pump track. Almost hit the puppy. hitting seven foot pocket airs out of the bowl. I enjoyed watching that, that was amazing. And the guys did a bunch of stuff that I've been eyeing up forever, waiting for somebody to come do. Muller's always calling out lines for everybody. Sometimes they don't really make sense. I've been looking at this for a while, jump over here, wall ride that, and then Cole's just like pretty much does them first try. It was really cool to see guys actually do the stuff that I'm always thinking about. Cole hit a crazy gap into the bowl off this pretty mellow bank. Bowl was pretty steep, slippery, slightly wet, blind. Definitely a creepy one. That was pretty gnarly to watch. That run-in sucked. That takeoff sucked and he landed it very smooth. Yeah, I mean, having Moeller out, you don't get to have this guy out very often riding with everyone. It's just a treat, you know? The guy invented, you know, the bar spin. He's done so much shit in his days, and just to be able to get to ride with him, super cool and super nice of him to let us just come over here and just destroy his house and take it over. And thank you, Chris, and I'm stoked you're out kicking it with us. Heading out to the bar later that night, waiting for the uh, building guys to show up. And then we got the whole crew together. And then we ended up going to Muller's mini ramp in the barn. Everyone was partying, having fun. Chris was tearing it up on a skateboard. Muller just crashing a lot on the skateboard. <laughs> <laughs> I 
was riding the 16 inch bike and Miller said looks like Hoder how he rides regularly. <laughs> Some of the most insane tricks I've seen on a little 12 inch or 8 inch or whatever, 3 inch bike, whatever the thing was. Watching Clint do the power mower on the extension at 4 in the morning on my daughter's 16 inch bike. That was a pretty wild night. Dougie decided to get on a ski bike and try to drop into the mini ramp on a ski bike. That's not really going to work anyways, especially on a bike from 1920 with skis on it. So the second someone gave him a little push into the mini ramp, dude, that ski snapped in half. He went flying. Dougie broke the vintage ski bike, Ben Muller seemed to break everything else. Glass was everywhere. Turned into just a complete shit show, like typical night, you know, with the S&M boys. Something's always gonna happen. You know, it's a pretty wild night. Neighbors aren't gonna be forgetting that one anytime soon. So Friday morning, I tore myself out of bed with about three hours of sleep and head down to the trails. Adam Baker of uh, s and Lore was basically the manager down there at the trails. He had all kinds of guys working on every line, trying to clean it up from about a month of rain. Nasty was down there. Jason Sunday was down there. Everybody was just kicking ass on the spot. We set up camp. We had a couple of huge TP tents for the dudes. Some people drove in from Arizona, Texas, Oklahoma, California. Pretty good camping crew for Friday night. And we got a nice little Friday evening session. It was really fun, all the stuff that Baker and his boys did throughout the day, Thursday and Friday. The place was 10 times better than it was earlier in the week. All the guys that came out this weekend and just like, you know, threw a hand in to get these jumps running, thank you, you know, appreciate it all. Hurry up, hurry up, ain't you had enough of this stuff? Astrid boys, go to close but the joke. that 16 inch from last night. So after the Friday night session, had a fire and went to bed. Saturday was the jam. We are here in Pagosa Springs, Colorado. s and 35 year anniversary. Couldn't be a nicer spot to have a jam and some trails. It's like a little magical oasis out here. The mountains, you got the pond, the river flowing, the trails up against the hill. You know, you're in the, the great wilderness out here. It's pretty epic. You could go kayaking, paddleboarding, do whatever you wanted, ride dirt bikes, four wheelers, whatever the hell you're feeling. There's grown men acting like children in the pond, floating down the river. Kids running amok. Everyone's camping, having a great time, barbecuing food. You know, to me, this is what BMX is. I can't wait. We still had more work to do on the trails to try and dry it up a little bit and fix some of the stuff. By the time 1.30 rolled around and I noticed that they were, everybody was on their bikes and ready to go and we opened it up and it was on. There was, I don't know how many dozens of riders, just everyone having a blast on the jumps. Great vibe, everyone's stoked, a lot of great riding. Seriously, the Colorado crew, you got killed here out there. Clint's my favorite trail rider to watch ride because he doesn't make a sound when he lands. Everything's so perfect and smooth and the way he rides just makes BMX look so fun to me. Smooth as butter, that just East Coast steez.
We never really tried to publicize this event that much. I put a few things on my personal Instagram, so you, you had to kind of be in the loop to even know that this was going on. The people that did show up were close friends and family. We had a lot of little kids riding the pump track that we built. It was a real grassroots kind of a, a vibe. And that's, that's exactly what I wanted. Sweet to watch everybody ride because it was just all different levels, like just the little kids hitting the pump track and then like Hucker doing like the big flip. It's just like fun to see everybody just having fun, everybody smiling, no bad vibes, and shredding or just pushing, just like pushing their limit just a little bit. Whether it's like jumping a tabletop or like hitting the big line, it gets me stoked. A lot of SM riders, old and new, came out. Troy McMurray was there, Adam Baker was there. Nasty, who holds a unique distinction of being the only guy that's ever been on SM Pro and Fit Pro, was there. Jason Ball, Freddie Chulo was there, donning the race jersey, Killian McGinnis. Just some old fires, you know, are getting it done, showing the young bucks how it is. So one particular standout for me on Saturday was Cole Volker. It was rad watching Cole ride the trails. I don't ever really get to see him ride trails, and he was ripping him a new one. I mean, he got double bar to X up at one point. Going to the moon. He was manualing out of the, the first hip into the roller. I think that was a surprise for a lot of people, which, I mean, probably shouldn't be a surprise because the guy could pretty much tear everything up. That was a standout for sure. Having Reynolds show up was just a highlight for so many of those guys. He's got to be the one of the most popular trail guys out there. I could tell kids were just, they were loving that. That was really sweet to have him there, and I think that was worth the price of admission for a lot of the guys, which was free, by the way. I ate a whole bunch of crap. I definitely tasted some of the dirt. I felt like the earth move. Yeah, he's okay though. Just, you know, missing a couple more teeth, I guess. We are celebrating s and being 35 years old, which is absolutely amazing. s and in my opinion, is what BMX is all about. It's super fun, it's not too serious, it's DIY. It's just the realest company out there in BMX. Like no other company stacks up to what Chris and s and has done over 35 years. For him to be doing this still at 35 years and still innovating with the products and to have an amazing team, it gives you hope that BMX is gonna stay cool forever. I couldn't imagine BMX without s and Cool to see the owner of the business just out there with the boys working on the jumps, making it all happen and then like, so stoked to ride too. We literally got more laps than everybody and for the owner of a BMX company, they're usually the ones sitting back watching the show, not partaking. He's like 50 something, has like two new hips and he's still like just shredding. It's just pure inspiration. You can just tell that the passion has always been there and always will be there. You know, I don't think Chris's love for BMX and for riding is ever gonna die. You know, for him to be out here riding with everyone and like building these jumps, not only for himself, but for other people to have fun on, like, it's pretty awesome. s to me is BMX, you know, I wouldn't want it any other way. The Hucker Show. Hucker showed up. That guy's just incredible to watch.
working on that graveyard shift. By the time the sun went down, everybody was shot. We had the new Built Different from Charlie Crumlish, the S&M Bikes 35 year video. People were loving it. Video was pretty sweet. Had a real fun vibe, not too serious. Charlie did a good job. All the boys did a good job. The tunes were awesome. On the internet, we'll be seeing that here real, real soon. And then we uh, had a nice big bonfire. Uh, last night, we turned it up. Total like Chris Moeller style SM party, you know. You had a bonfire, you had beers flowing. Hoder looking pretty good on the dance floor. Yeah, signature Hoder dance moves on point. Ladies look out. He's just hilarious. Everything he does. Moeller break dancing, doing head slides, spinning all around on the dirt. The bionic man was definitely cutting up a rug for sure. I'm like, dude, that guy's got like two replaced hips, replaced knees. <laughs> How's he moving like that? But uh, he doesn't skip a beat. Photo booth was awesome. My brother-in-law, Pete, helped Melissa set up a photo booth, which honestly I thought nobody cared about the photo booth. Sure enough, the photo booth went bananas. Yeah, there were wigs and hats and all kinds of props. It was a huge hit. Good job on the photo booth, Pete and Melissa. Just a good time with everyone, you know, and Chris knows how to have a good time and share it with everyone. Day after the party, everyone was pretty toasted, but uh, we ended up checking out the Durango Skate Park. There's a couple good poles there, which was super cool, nice street area. Yeah, Milky joined us at the skate park and was hitting some sick tech lines there, smacking his pegs on everything. That was pretty sick to watch. Cole flew out of the skate park out of like this six foot quarter. It was probably a eight foot tall fence. It was insane. Cole was high speed, flying out of the skate park, flying over the skate park, 20 foot airs. That was a little exaggeration, but he was at least going like 12 on this one hip. Dude's nuts, he goes high as shit, he's technical, he can do it all.
So the last day of the trip, we were all a little bit beat up. We started the day out in Ignacio, Colorado at the new skate park they just built there. It was like a new school plaza park, had a little bowl. Super huge park, real wide open, a lot of cool features. We ended up staying there for like three or four hours. It was super, super fun. All the guys enjoyed it and we got some fun riding in. One of the things I like at that park is a roller quarter, about eight foot tall quarter with no deck and pool coping. It just looks really cool, kind of floating out there in the middle of nowhere with that nice scenic Colorado backdrop. You can call it surprise, there it is, and a part of it is me. The roller before it was kind of deadly to get that much air on it, so that was amazing. Once again, Hoder killing everything, hitting every line in the skate park, high speed gaps. Always a pleasure to watch him ride. That bike is so slick. I was like, damn, dude, I hope he doesn't just slide out. Me is me. Paul got a, a nice 180 on the bowl with the half cap back in, so that was sweet. Hoder had a straight leg turn down, which we were all loving, including him. That was the best turndown probably that Hoder has ever done. Self-proclaimed BTM, big turndown mic. Opening up some cool lines. Gap in, gap out of the bowl. The gap out was crazy. The quarter he was landing into was not even a real quarter pipe. Get the boy stoked. Yeah. Yeah. Quarter number one. Cole whipped over a big three block into the basketball court. This is straight flat. Why not? Pretty sweet to see him just do whatever he wants to do. The park was pretty fun. Yeah, there was just a random basketball chilling in the park. I kind of remembered playing this game when I was a kid where we would kick the ball around with our bikes and trying to score goals. Yeah, it was like bike polo with the basketball, trying to like just hit the backboard upright. Next thing you know, we were playing this game for a while. <laughs> Getting very competitive and aggressive. Paul is just charging, no brakes, super sharp pegs. I saw some pretty bad carnage. Seeing Moeller go down, definitely Paul went down a couple times. <laughs> it didn't dawn on me until after we played for a while, I almost killed ourselves with the ball that we actually did it with a can. <laughs> so we did try and play it with the ball. It actually ended up being maybe the most exhausting thing I did all week. It was fun though, I think we won. No big deal, really. So with a couple hours of daylight left, we uh, packed up the rig and headed south to Aztec, which is actually across the New Mexico border. I don't know who built this park in Aztec, New Mexico, but it was fucking sick. Excuse my language. 
definitely felt like an organ park. All the coping was different material. Every transition was different. And that's what makes it more fun. Real small, real tight, so wild, unpredictable. It was pretty gnarly, tricky to try to find a line in there. Oh, oh shit! Once we started figuring it out, the park worked good and like, everyone seemed to have fun there. Arie, he was doing some sweet lines in there. Just has like a fun, unique style. He's only 16, so I'm excited to see where he takes it. Just blowing everything. Hoder seemed like he was right at home. He was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he was like right in his element in that park. He was just jacked up enough, weird enough for him to bounce over enough shit and fly all around. Yeah, he was killing it in there. <laughs> Paul, I think Paul almost died in that park maybe a few times, but didn't. It's a grill, he's eight, he's fucking, he's going for it no matter what. Just like a cannonball charging into like unknown territory. Pretty fun to watch. Took Reynolds a little longer to get going in there, but he really did turn it on in there. was hitting some sick pockets that didn't even seem possible. I've got a hangover heart from your kisses last night. My head is so heavy, the tears blind my sight. It was a really sick trip. I had a blast. We had a good crew, and the event was good, and maybe we'll do another event there in the future. We'll see. And all I have left is a hang. Heart. Too much wine from the bottle makes you feel bad next day. This trip was amazing. I just want to say thank you, SM Bikes. Thank you, Chris Moeller, Melissa, everyone you know at the building, and couldn't have asked for a better trip. Be my darling, just how I should start. To take away the pain of this hangover heart. Thank you, Moeller and Melissa and everyone for having us out, letting us stay at the house. Pleasure hanging out with everyone. Thank you. It's been an awesome time. great time and I'm thankful to be a part of this. 
I'll never forget it. No pills from the doctor, no drugs from the store will help <laughs> me forget the one I adore. I don't need a doctor, no nurse with her charm. All I need is you. The trip was awesome. It really felt like a real family, you know. It's pretty cool to just be a part of SM and this group of people that like bikes over and out. But tell me, my darling, what good will it do? Come back to me, baby. Let's. It was a great time to get together and just be like, you know, SM family. That's what it's about. Great way to celebrate 35 years of SM bikes. People stay just a little bit longer. We won't play just. Stay.